Watch. You see the boys? Hey, puppy. See the boys? Yeah. Come here. Come on. We got to get her on like an Orvis <laughs> catalog, you know? Oh, by the way, we're live, guys. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Squatch is looking better than Cheech any day of the is, week. Is Squatch going to tie the fly today? Sure. Or, or provide some material anyway? She provided materials for some dry flies the other day. Uh-huh. Come on. Okay, off. She did her She's job. Very, She's going to go lay on very. She's very cute. She's very cute. Okay. Well, welcome, everyone, to the first and maybe the only <laughs> yeah, see how it goes. triple threat tie-off. Triple threat tie-off. Two of, I think, probably the two best uh, video uh, fly tires uh, in the world. And people who I admire and and watch uh, a lot, and um, I'm sure that there's a lot of excited people out there to get you two guys together. Well, after you said a, nice stuff about us, now we're going to have to be nice to you, Tom. No, you don't have to be nice to me. That's not part. That's not part of. That's not in the contract. Did you read the contract, Cheech? No, I I had Brig read through it, and he can only uh, say out about every other word. So yeah, no, good. it's uh, it's <laughs> the contract says that you you are to uh, to give grief to any and all tires on here. So it's okay. required. It's I required. am in. I'm in. I'm actually going to try to pull this up on the Orvis one so I can actually see what's going on. You'll get an echo, don't. No, I got I my volume is down. Oh, okay. Oh, down, you're down, actually... down. I've never done that before. Just sometimes you like to like just peek over and see what people are commenting and you know, mm -hmm. little pro mm -hmm. back there. Well, you should be able to see the comments uh on the side of your screen, Cheech. Yeah, Brigham. Uh, so Right. Come on, Brigham. <laughs> We're new to this live game, you know. So <laughs> poor Brigham. <laughs> anyway, camera. Anyway, today we're going to tie a Thunder Creek bucktail, which is an old pattern. Tim and I were talking about it earlier, and we we both tied it when it first came out. Um, was it in the seventies, probably, Tim? I I heard somewhere nineteen fifty six. I I can't. Oh, so really? not not when it that. first came out for me anyway. Maybe for oh, you, but no, uh, no, yeah. I, I wasn't tying then. <laughs> I was two years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I heard that, but I heard fifty six for whatever. Oh, okay. Year, but... Anyway, it's an older pattern. Uh, it's a bucktail, and you know you don't see people fishing plain old bucktails that often, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, and I, I agree. Cheech, you picked it. You picked it, which you know, for a Western guy, this is such an Eastern fly. Why did why did you pick this fly for us to tie today? Well, you know, I had never tied one before, and I always thought they looked cool. I'm like, uh -huh. I'm sure that those guys probably have a whole bunch of these stuck in their tweed and all this stuff. So probably <laughs> a fly, probably a fly they're they're familiar with. Um, so you say you were two years old in the 50s when it came out. I was two years old in the 70s when it came out. Oh, there you so, go. See, and I have a theory on why Cheech picked it. Is Cheech knows that I'm highly sensitized to UV cure resin, and that would lock <laughs> no. me out of <laughs> ah, Yeah, Tim, that's, I, that's what I I'm thinking. I thought about that, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, crap. Like, this will be the first time that I get to use solar res where I don't have to make Tim run across the expo center. <laughs> <laughs> no but you're a good sport tim i'm sure that there's maybe a hack that we'll learn from you for uh reinforcing something but you yeah, never yeah. know yes yeah, no i we're gonna kick it old school today and and uh, yeah and you know what he's gonna use what <laughs> like beeswax or something i don't know what did no, the no 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 sally hansen it's pro in. staff <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's right <laughs> we've got everything in the cart today oh wow cleared the makeup counter out yeah. <laughs> it was love yeah. it was love you at yeah. the drugstore <laughs> i'm just over here with uh you know the fancy resins 
Oh my! Yeah, eyes I'm going to use I'm going to use a lot of resin in mine too. So I was trying to just hold those up, hoping Flagler's eyes would just start. Yeah, they are. Ah. <laughs> All right. So we got three of us to tie. We better start tying. And I think Cheech, because you're the guest, you should go first. Yes. All right. Well, then I'll go first. I'm going to have my fancy assistant named Brigham um, shorten my camera angle. We're kind of uh, further out on this one. That's all right. I chose, what's this new hook? This is the uh, Umqua XT350. It's it's just like the the old Daiichi 2461, which is also a real good one. Are we ready to tie yet, Brig? Go for it. If I start tying while you're moving around that much, are people going to get dizzy? Well, yeah, maybe. Hopefully. All right. What so, size? What size are you tying, Cheech? What, so what I'm doing on, I'm doing this on a size four. So this is a size four, roughly two and a half x long Aberdeen bend straight eye hook. So there you have Super. it. Super. And. Um, I'm, I'm just going to start mine off. I have 140 denier thread. And I am going to wrap it about halfway down is all. And we'll trim off. You guys tell me if I'm going too slow because, goodness gracious, I've never done this before. All right. So oh, you're doing great, Chief. I'm going to. You're doing better than Flagler. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll wait and see. So I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to put a little bit of flash in the tail of this one. I hope that doesn't ruffle your feathers too much, fellers. Oh, but this is a not, synthetic not material. Starting already. I, I know this doesn't grow on trees, but here in the West, we use flash and a little bit of plastic. <laughs> you know, the further West you go, the more plastic things are. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to just bring it back up like this. And I'm going to tie in that clump about right here. And I'm going to trim it off about like that. And then I'll, I'll do one more step for the tail and then I'll pass it off. That way we don't have to go back and forth to me 40,000 times with all the things I'm tying into this. So I'm just taking some bucktail. You can see it's a real sparse amount. And I have these gigantic hair stackers. Um, and I like to put Holy them in this. <laughs> oh, he's stacking his bucktail? <laughs> it's a trash can. Listen. Wow. You guys, you guys want to come and attack me? I got one for each one of you. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, I'll that's take one cheap, of those big that's ones. That's a cheat size stacker. Yeah, wow. weapons. Weapons is what they are. My good buddy Keegan Barrett made this one for me. Anyway, because bucktail's so twisty, if you have a big open stacker like that, that's your best bet to get it to align. It, these don't have to be aligned perfectly, but, you know, for the sake of the triple threat tie-off, the first ever um, triple threat tie-off, I had to get fancy. So there I have a chunk of bucktail. It's really important to, to manage the, the tie-in stuff on this because you don't want this to get too fat, okay? So you can see I'm pre-trimming and I'm going to tie those in exactly right there. So once those are in, just wrap that back without flaring it too much and I'm ready for the next step. Wow. Next. Our flies are gonna be different. Wow, our flies are going to be really different already. Really, yeah, amazing. Really. Wait, just from that, you guys are like, yeah, this, oh yeah, oh yeah. This, yeah, we're, we're, yep, this yeah. is the roadblock, huh? Oh, Chi Chi's some shimmer boo for the tail. We're out. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tim, why don't you go next? All right, I can do that. I think. So, um, actually, let me get go go back one step. Um, for a hook, um, this is, I don't have those fancy ring eye hooks. And so it is a lightning strike uh, size six. So smaller than Cheech's. I'm hoping that gets me some points Yeah, but somewhere. that's like an 8X long hook, dude. That's it is pretty crazy. It is pretty long. I'll give you that. Okay. I, I will give you that. Um, will be taken. Okay. But the thing is, without the ring eye, all I can... Just take my handy little pliers and 
there, there's a ring eye right there. So if you don't have ring eye hooks, no big deal. But I, I will tell you that this thing uh, is kind of easier to tie with a ring eye hook, uh, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm going to start right up at the back edge of the hook eye. But that's I'm a just, cool hook eye, Tim. I like it. It's just barely slightly bent down. Yeah. Yep. Looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's homemade. So I'm going to, um, I have just a little crystal flash and um, all I'm going to do, I know this is going to seem really weird to you guys, too much flash on this thing is just too much flash. And um, I'm, I'm going to take just a single strand, find its midpoint. I know this doesn't seem like a lot, but... Um, the other thing that I'm going to do here, and it will kind of be a reoccurrent theme as I go along, is I like a lot of grip on my thread for this one. And so I'm using the Benyard's tires oh wax. Oh, God, uh, wax. I know. Wax, yep. Wow. And so I've got some uh, uni thread, 6 aught that I'm using. And I'm just going to kind of pull up and toward me with that flash to get it to land right on top of the hook shank. And I'm going to wrap back about to the hook point. I don't, you don't have to really go any further. I don't want this stuff to, to foul in the hook bend, but I'm going to have bucktail top and bottom. So not a biggie. Wow. And then, so I'm going to go all the way back up use my very expensive material clip and i'm going to get right behind the eye and i'm going to once again just so i'm ready for the next step i'm going to hit my thread with that vineyards just one more time should i do the bucktail or what should i do should I, you want to go tom yeah why don't i go because uh, i have to tie a body in so I, these these flies are going to be so different you can you can't People are wow, a it. body. Yeah. All right. Mm. So um, he's going to tie a Chernobyl ant and call it a Thunder Creek. <laughs> and we're going to say, what the hell? And he's going to say, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Yeah. Do whatever I want. Tanner, can you put me on the big screen, please? <laughs> so I am going to make a body out of Mirage Tinsel. And like Tim... I don't like a lot of flash, and so I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna make a kind of an old fashioned tinsel body on this using this uh, pearlescent tinsel. What what hook are you using, Tom? Could I? Oh, ask? I am I am using the um I you know it's the it's the classic ring eye. I think it's a Daiichi whatever number uh, Cheech said. Seventeen or that is the twenty four. What is it? That's the 17. bronze version though. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's an it's an older it's an older hook. I think it's still sold. It's a and, good thing that you have the midge jaw on your Renzetti there for this big screamer. <laughs> yeah, no, that, 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 is actually, <laughs> that is actually the um, the game changer jaw, and I, I like it for everything. Well, apparently so. Look at that thing. <laughs> so I'm using uh, seventy denier thread, and I'm gonna just start it right there. And I'm going to tie my tinsel in here, and so it, it, you're, you're getting that you're getting the same effect that Tim did. Uh, you know, just a small amount of flash showing through the body, but I'm going to bear with me here. And just you know, you just took this is a kind of an old-fashioned way of tying a tinsel body, but you just gently overlap the preceding turn and you just have to be careful when you get to the hook point. I tried doing this rotary, but I have even more trouble getting around the hook point when I tie it rotary. That would be tragic so, if you let go at this point, right? Yeah, it would. It would. And I'm not going to Tim, so don't even. Okay. Or it's you nice when right you now. nick that with your hook point too, and oh. it just breaks the mile. Oh, is this what we're supposed to do, Tim? Yes. 
constantly. What are you doing? I can't see. What do you guys do <laughs> behind my back? Well, the fact that you're thinking about what we're talking about. I don't trust we're, 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 we're in your head, Rosenbauer. I don't trust either of you guys behind me there. This is a good way to make use of about 36 inches of flash. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just doing it, you know. I mean, it, 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 I'm sure it's interesting to people that we're all tying this differently. And I'm only going to, I'm only going to use a couple of uh, turns there because I'm actually, I know Tim's going to be shocked, but I'm actually going to UV this because this is a really durable fly if you, uh, but the tinsel body is not, so I'm going to UV this body. Good call there, Rosenbauer. And then, uh, and then it won't unravel on me. Nothing worse than a tinsel body unraveling. And I'm UV in it. And that's my first step. You're up, Cheech. Okay. I guess this is the part where we're going to Put some bucktail on the hook. Um, so let's see. We good, Brig? Yep. My cameraman's moving the camera, inching it forward ever so slightly. So <laughs> what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to do it in baby bluegill color. Oh. And the bottom is going to be Whoa. And orange, the only time ever these two colors should be married together in fly matrimony. Otherwise, it just Denver Broncos colors, and it's disgusting. <laughs> so I'm going to... Geez. Whoever invented the Thunder Creek is just rolling over in their grave right now. Oh, yeah. Same with yeah. the guy that invented the Griffiths gnat. I got called out on that one the other day, too. Wow. I did a resin body gnat. Oh, I saw that. That was pretty cool, though. Yeah, I mean, everyone's like, it's not going to float. It's not going to float. And I say, well, um, you remember that time about displacement and stuff? You know, it'll float. All right, what I'm doing is I'm just farming off a few fibers. And when you, when you take this bucktail out, there's always a few little short haters hanging in there. So just yank those out of there. And you can see that the blue is a lot more curly than the orange and that's fine and i'm just going to take those in my fingers and i'm just going to place them on top of each other and just kind of uh, mix those all around uh, what? Like this uh, i think i better stop someone check tom <laughs> he doesn't sound good right now yeah well Get you know <laughs> <laughs> All right, so somehow, I, I won't say it, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> somehow I'm going to shove all that stuff in here again. Uh, this is the there's a question. Was that a mylar body? Yes, it was. It's a it's a pearlescent mylar that I use for the body. I'm going to put a few more strands in here because it doesn't look like I have enough. The good thing with a wide stacker is you can just put it in on the other side. Tim, are you going to stack your bucktail now that Cheech is doing it? I, I was planning on doing it anyhow. I'm kind of a, oh, you were All yeah right. with with this this one I oh. usually don't, but with this one I, I do. I just this pulled my stacks, mo mondo guys. stacker out. I wasn't going to stack, but now I am. <laughs> this is loud. I'm sorry, but you really have to get into it. All right, so here we have. This is going to be the belly or in the bottom of the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna measure how long I want this bad boy to be by doing that. Um, so I'm gonna pre-trim this and you have to, I, you have to kind of move it all around in your hands. Otherwise you have to cut with your left hand and I can't do that. So I've measured it. Here's my tie in point. One more switcheroo and I'm going to want to put these butts right up next to the, the other butts 
This flies all about butts. I'm going to stick it right about there. Oh, you know what? I almost tied it in on the wrong side. I, I you oh, know, I was going to say something, but what? I thought I'd let you. I thought I'd let yeah, you. Yeah, let him do it, it, Tom. Okay, yeah. listen, yeah. listen. All my West Coast people, I need your support right now because I'm being sabotaged from the East. <laughs> Goodness gracious! All right, so I'm going to put that up against there. And I'm going to tie real tight. You could use GSP for this fly, but it's really not necessary. And I like to keep it pinched right here in my finger as I wrap those butts back. And when I end up where I want, it should be real nice and clean, just like that. And the reason why this point's so important is that's where I want to fold my head over on this. So you can see I, got, I have good coverage on the bottom of the fly. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm done with step two. Who's up next? I believe I am. Do it. Well, mine's a little different, Cheech. Just a little different. Um, anyway, I'm going to tie in. This is going to be the back of the fly. You know, bait fish are generally darker on the back um, and lighter on the belly. Very few of them are red and blue. Um, so I'm going to use a uh, <laughs> nice... Nice um, kind of bait fish colored. Uh, where do I want to go? How about down in there a little bit? Down the prime territory here. And I'm going to, this is a beautiful um, specimen. But, and I hate to waste these long hairs, but I, I'm going to get rid of them. And then everything that's short. And so I know that all this hair is, is almost full length. The other thing I'm going to do, just to make it stack a little easier. Oh, sorry. Um, stack a little easier is I'll take some off of there. Now, I, I anticipate you guys are going to have stacker envy here because you got to check this thing out. A uh, guy in Michigan gave it to me. I don't even know who it was. And just came, up to, me, at, came up to me at the show. It. and What was that, Cheech? I can't see a good stacker. I th you, you have some wood in your hands, but I can't see it. I have like a special vision device. Watch this. I'm joking this, with you. This thing is um, super, super cool. I'm going to take it out and just trim the ends off just a little bit more so it stacks even better. I, I can't believe that the guy made this thing. Um, so what it does... You go like this, and that falls out poorly. We'll do it one more time. No more stacking. Because you got to see the Well, machine. that is cool. I don't but even know what's going on over there. Look at that. Oh. That's how thin that wood stacker is. I don't Very know how nice. to do it. Yeah, isn't that slick? Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah. So, um Generally, what I do, um, I, I can switch it around in my hands, but I, I usually do both bucktails, um, the belly as well as the back at the same time, but we'll, we'll switch it up here. And I just kind of know from measuring that, that I want to do it so it's about like that. I eventually want the, the tips to be back. Sorry. You need to back, zoom out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, back by my materials clip like that. And then I want to add just a little bit for the fold back of the head. So I'm going to go about like that. Try to keep that mark, if you will. Oh, you're switching hands. You always give me yeah. grief for switching hands. Well, I tell you what I normally do since you brought it up, Rosenbauer. <laughs> <laughs> normally, I take it out of the stacker by its tips, right? And it goes straight into my handy dandy chip clip. And that way you don't have to flip it around in your hands. So there you go, Tom. Are you That's on it. the chip clip pro staff too? I, I am. Yeah, sorry. Well, and, easy. Easy here. Easy. I'm, I'm a chip clip guy too. Come on. Yeah, I, I love chip clips. Um, Except for I have the the fancy Swiss one that ever yeah the his feelings yeah oh and the so, Swiss chip clip yeah yeah oh. yeah the seventy dollar chip clip 
They're oh, nice, I don't know what it costs over there in Jersey or what your dealer's charging you for a platter, but here it's 44 bucks. 44 bucks. I think this chip clip, if because I get them by the the gross, is about 12 cents. See, so it's pretty close. Pretty close, yep. In the ballpark. Anyway, I'm going to give my thread just one more little waxing. It'll wax on. And then that wax just gives your thread four-wheel drive. Real important, guys, to, to get your thread all the way out to the back edge of the hook eye, like right there. Because if we're going to be pulling this back and you don't want little hook shank poking out of there, just a little tip for for Cheech and Tom going oh, forward. Oh, thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Appreciate it, Tim. <laughs> yeah, really. Appreciate we'll be looking forward to your resin <laughs> tip later, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So I've got one tied in. Let's, let's go over to Mr. Rosenbauer. <laughs> all right. Well, surprisingly, Tim, I am using the same color bucktail <gasps> as you. Really? An the, olive. For the back. Look. Wow. Yeah. And um, the reason the reason I'm using olive is a lot, a lot of bait fish have darker colors. But I am thinking that even though I'm tying this on a freshwater hook, uh, this Thunder Creek is going to be an excellent sand eel imitation for striped bass. And yet the hook will rust after a while, but I can use it for trout too. And so I'm going to pull, I like to pull the very longest hairs out of there and then grab it here and pull all the fuzzies. What did you call them? Somebody called them something. Haters. H haters. Yeah. Haters. And Just I want like to do your fly Now I, I am sorry, but I only have a Renzetti stacker. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. That's the best, that's I, the best I'm really... I could do. Got to do what you got to do, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yep, any port in a storm. When yeah. you're at camp, they give you one for every finger. And I don't have a fancy way of pulling <laughs> it out, but, you know, the hell. You just flip it around a half dozen times. Yeah. And that'll, gonna keep, cut. that'll keep I'm those gonna, tips aligned. I'm going to even these ends off here, too. Okay. Hey, Tom, and... you think that would work at the pond at the Orvis factory over there? Did we lose Tom? And no, uh, I, I, pr I pressed button number four, which has no camera on it. We know about <laughs> button number four. <laughs> All right. So I am going to bring my thread up. Got a little doodad there. I'm going to bring my thread up to the eye, as my friend Timmy says. Right up to the eye. And then I'm going to measure it. That's probably good right there. Actually, is that too short? I wasn't going to say anything. But now I am. No, I like them short. I like them short. That's fine. Because <laughs> sand eels are real short. <laughs> I don't like I don't like them as long as as Timmy's. That's like when you catch the guy tying with the regal vice upside down, and you let him know that it's upside down, and he's like, "Ah, oh, actually, I, I like <laughs> that's it. the way I like it." <laughs> no. <laughs> And, and yeah, you really need to bear down on these and, and make sure they're centered. And I'm going to trim a little bit of that off. Quite a bit of it, actually. <clears throat> Let's see. That's going to be short. But that's good. That's where I want it, believe it or not. 
<laughs> There's a lot of merit to a small bait fish. Yeah. And then I'm going to do something that you guys didn't do. I like to, <laughs> what? Tie it I, in too? You no, know, I like to take a turn around that. It helps keep the it helps keep the colors separate. Ooh, yeah, that's a good idea. That's interesting. Haven't yeah. seen that you, one before. You know where I learned that from many years ago from uh, Dick Talur. Wow. You guys. You guys may not remember Dick Talor, but when, when, if you grew up in upstate New York like I did when I was a teenager tying, Dick was like everybody's hero. And um, he did a lot. He used to write a lot for Fly Tire magazine. Um, and he was a fishing buddy. But yeah, he showed me that uh, tying a Mickey Finn that way, taking a loop around each each turn of bucktail to keep those, those lines separate. Interesting. Yeah. yeah different. Very cool. Yeah. I'm sure that won't come back to haunt you in the end. <laughs> oh, man. You, you, but you're hoping it does. <laughs> it might. just might. Uh, uh, why? why? Why is it going to come back to haunt me? I, no, no reason. Just. It's just us getting in your head, Tom. Yep. Just like hoping. Gonna... Oh, now you got me worried. All right, Cheech, you're up. All right. We're doing heads now, right? Uh, yeah. I, I still got a little more bucktail to do, but. All right. So I'm going to do two colors for the head, but I'm not going to blend it. I'm just going to stack them on top of each other. And I'm using just a tiny bit of olive. So about like that. That one's almost so, it's almost so nice. I don't have to align it, but I'm still going to do that. And the only reason I want is so I can separate and try to align, but Bucktail does whatever it wants. Okay, so, and on this one, I'm just going to measure against from here to the tip of this, this wing right there. It's about like that. And I will pass it back and forth between hands. Tim Can doesn't I, like that. Do Tim get, doesn't like that. He, he well, really... He, He'll he'll really uh, get on you for that. I know. Well, I I got a lot to learn still in my fly tying journey, gents. All right. So same thing, <laughs> just like Tim and Tom, or as I call them, Tomothy Rosenflagler. What they showed you <laughs> is <laughs> you oh. have to, <laughs> that needs to be a sticker. Someone do it, please. I'll buy them for shop. Anyway. <laughs> Make sure that your thread's right up against that that eye. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a goofy looking head. So, same same thing. I'm going to tie that in right right next to the other bump. Flare it out a little bit. Wrap it back, and I'm going to bring it back up again. I'm going to do that again, but not before I spread that out a little bit. And I'm going to do it with black now. I just want the top of the fly to, to be a little darker. All right, so again, another little clump of uh, bucktail. I'm pulling out the the little haters out of there. Tom was getting rid of the, the tall haters. Is that interesting that Tom chose to go to battle with the smaller soldiers, and I'm choosing the taller ones? Yeah, interesting. You know, interesting. Bucktail all the same. All right. Let's see. We're roughly aligning these. And I'm going to roughly measure that, trim it off, and it goes right on top now of the olive. You want to maybe throw some yellow in there to cover the whole spectrum of colors, Cheech, or... You know, we could do that. It was just a thought. <laughs> you know what? Smart Alec. I, I'm going to do it. There's no purple in there either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, check this out. Well, I'll, I'm not going to put yellow in this one, but I will show you a few 
finished Thunder Creeks that I thought turned out really super cool with some uh, some pretty spicy colors. I'm just trying to make sure that these fibers are all covering um, close enough up, up to the eye. And now I think I'm ready. I think I'm all tied oh, in here. You're going to do it. No, I, I, I'm just uh, making sure I don't need to add anything else here. Oh, before. Okay. All right. So I, I think I'm ready to, to go. Whoever's next is up. All right. I think I'm up next. Um, so my, my second color is, it's, it's actually not white. It, it's um, a guy who does get uh, unbelievable bucktail uh, here in New Jersey, uh, uh, Brad Buzzy. Um, I, I get a couple of these from him every year. It, it, he calls it um, buttercream. And it's just, it's an off white color. And to me, it looks a little more natural than, than really, really bright white, but kind of the same procedure as before. I'll do it a little quicker, take out the longer haters and then the shorter haters. I like that term. Yeah, so do I. It's I uh, we're going we're gonna to have to use that. I was watching a cooking video on Instagram and there's a Cajun guy that cooks outside and he calls all the flies that come around haters because they just try to uh, thing up. And I am going to, I want it to be sort of long, but I'm going to trim it off here. <clears throat> and same thing into my super cool fancy stacker. A little stacking pad so it's not quite so loud. What was that, Joan? Copper, Copper Joan is making yeah me making me nervous. <laughs> Copper Joan is a role model, Tim. Yes, she is. Tim wouldn't be able to tie his shoes without Copper Joan. Or oh, afraid. Don't I know it? <laughs> uh oh, wait. Well, she even works as a video switcher. Did you guys? So I, I also, I have pre-waxed this thread yet again, and I'm going to go just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit shorter with the white, just to get a little more, a little taper in there. And I am going to do kind of what Cheech did and spread that stuff out. And then nice, tight, waxed thread wraps all the way back there. Oh, almost got the tie-in thread. That would be tragic. Oh, that would have been good. Wow. That would have been good. <clears throat> So, let's say I'm being nice. No, don't be well, nice. No, there's a comment saying that we're showing a commercial for all the tying tools, and you guys are literally using freaking chip clips. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know yeah. what? So, you know what? If we don't tell the people what tool we're using, they ask. Exactly. So we're, that we're, time's over. This is the voice of experience saying we're just preempting all those comments. Yes. Truth. I don't know what happened there, fellas. I what? just did you make a mistake? I did. Uh, uh, Somehow I got spun around, boys. That's all right. Oh. Just just go ahead and deal with it, Tim. Yeah. Wow. That was <laughs> terrible. It's that wax thread. It is. This stuff's supposed to be grippy. <laughs> oh. That's terrible. No, you got this. You're all right. No, I got It'll green work. on the bottom, and I don't want green on the bottom. Well, just fish it upside down. It's a ring-eyed hook. No, that's a good save. Hold on. I don't... If it doesn't work out, I apologize, guys. I, I don't like just kind of going with it. So... 
thing. I'm going to do the the redo real quick. Promise. Take the butter be cream quick. on. Throw so it that on. goes on there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what? What in the world just happened? I th I don't I lost think you my your, You didn't. You didn't turn your hook upside down, did you? I Maybe. Don't, I don't. You know, if you had a midge jaw in your Renzetti to type, it would probably work better. I love it's not a midge jaw, it's the it's the changer jaw. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. I forgot. Okay, yeah, you guys just keep, I love it. Keep, keep chatting. Yeah, we're we're we'll, we'll amuse to see ourselves. Here, we'll amuse we're ourselves here. here while you fix yeah, your mistake. Well, I, no well, I problem. messed around with this junk. I don't know <laughs> what I did. Who chose this fly anyway? Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, what a not the young. Guy. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna stack here. I want to see exactly what happened there. That was just wrong. We'll have to watch it on the replay and see what you did. Yeah, that was really, really weird. Maybe somebody in the studio audience can tell me what I did there. That was close. We're saved. The beeswax has come to save the day. The day, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm done. All right. So you guys are just doing a two le a two color one, right? No, I have like eight colors in mine. <laughs> oh no, but <laughs> someone wasn't paying attention. Goodness. No, no, it just, no, it's not okay. Never mind. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm I I'm actually using three different bunches of hair. I don't think those guys are. So I want a black med median line on my uh on my fly and i find that i need to use a little more of the middle color than the top color or else it doesn't show through so this is kind of like a black nose dace with an olive back and i don't have any uh prisoners up front this time prisoners no, what, They're just haters. Point? We haven't thrown haters. Them in haters, <laughs> not prisoners. <laughs> haters. Prisoners. <laughs> Outliers. Oh. Anyway, there's you that. Better be nice to Tom. Oh, that's all I'm saying. I know. And then. Um, I just measure it. Am I on the right camera? Yeah. I just measure it against that one and tie it in. So I'm going to actually use, th you know, two bands on top. <clears throat> Go back nice and tight. You ought to see if you can get some more fingers in there, Tom. Thank you for reminding me, Cheech. Not to, not to. And then. <laughs> do the loop. Do the loop. Yeah, I'm going to do the loop. I'm going to do the loop. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it. So I'm just looping around there. This okay. makes it easier when I'm pulling them forward. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Okay. That's looking good. Oh, watch that thread, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sketchy. Sketchy. I beg your pardon. Well, I was just Hi, saying. Cheech. 
I flash between before my eyes because yeah. you're getting in there with those scissor points. Yeah. Okay. I'm up. All right. This is the part. It's where the rubber meets the road. This is where the rubber meets the road. Is that where it is, boys? All right. So what I'm going to do here is I've got this little kind of jog down. And I don't like that because if I create my bullet head right here, it can still slide off of my normal tying point and loosen up that whole knot. So what I need to do is just smooth out these ridges here. And now I should be able to tie it in right here and not have any slippage. So I'm just going to grab all this and start going like that. Let me, let me show you this way, how cool that looks. I posted a picture on my Instagram. Oh, it's a nice dry fly. <laughs> yeah. It, I posted a picture on my Instagram to, to show uh, it was black and white and only one person guessed that it was a Thunder Creek. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it was like that. All right. So we're ready to tie that back in. Am I straight in the vice brig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm just going to push all those back. Oh. Bring those up. And I'm just going to put a few loose turns right here. And I do have a few stragglers, and I'll take care of those in a second. But I'm just going to look at my, my colors now. Make sure that, I mean, the colors are all kind of blended together. But I just want to distribute everything around how I want it. And then I'll cinch down a fair bit. Um, actually, I have a... I have a straggler piece of thread. I'm just going to do that one more time without explaining it so I can do it the right way. Oh, by the way, Spencer says we got to get Cheech the camera set up for live streams. You hear that, Brig? Yeah, I, I heard hear that, Brigham. I've been telling Cheech that for five years, so. Uh, he should be He should be listening to you, Brigham. I know. I, know. I don't listen to Brigham. <laughs> All right, so there I have my head. I'm going to throw a whip finish in this now. Just a two turn whip finish because I'm going to cover up that white thread just with some orange thread. Oh. And I like how bright orange this thread is. Um, Let's see. So I will just whip finish this now. And that's a little bit thicker band than I like on my Thunder Creek. And then I'm just going to come in here and fix any of these little pokers that want to stay around and play too much. And this is this can be real sketchy, but if you take a lighter, oh. you tiny ones. And you come into it about like that fast. Or a cauterizing tool. Yeah, but the cauterizing tool is just going to burn the crap out of whatever it touches. <laughs> this is just... no, you, you, don't, you don't actually hit the fly with it. You just wave it around. It'll do it. Okay, I'll try it. I, I need to try that one too. <laughs> Go ahead. Try it now. I'll, I'll let you know how it works. <laughs> I'll let you know how it works later. All right. There, we're about ready to get artsy with this, but that's the final step in the tie-in portion. So, all right, all right, Tim, let's see Tim. if you can make another mistake. Okay, yes, yeah. that, that was a, that was a bad one too. That was tragic. Um, so I want to make sure first that I I'm spread out, top and bottom, looking good, and I got to thank uh, Mister. Barry Ord Clark, I believe, is where I saw this one on his video of a Thunder oh, yeah. streamer and yeah. using a clear plastic tube. This is not the tool I usually use to do this, but I, need to put I, think, some that, on his head. I think that will work. I'm actually going to see if the one that I really like will work. I think it's too small. Yep. Oh, go ahead. Force it. Yeah, old, old sippy straw, the kids. 
Hey Cheech, hey Cheech. No, no cheating, no cheating behind the is, behind the Is he doing there. something? I, I saw we're, you. Really? Yeah, he's he making yeah, adjustments. He was, yeah, he was uh, adjusting well. Hey, Brick, can you go get me some Kleenex so we can get these guys to stop crying so freaking much? No. Party, party foul on Cheech. I put a little tiny bit of super glue on there. Watch, I'll wipe it right off. There, now it's gone. Okay? So here's some Kleenex from the West Coast to the East Coast. Stop, you're moving. <laughs> and just like that, Tim's got a nice head built. Yeah, yeah, but you Very always nice. want to check that. Well, first of all, just, like, add just a little wax because that's what we like to do. A little extra grippy grip. A little more wax. Yeah, you need yeah. more wax. Wax is always good. And I want to check that other side just to make sure I'm pulled tight and everything is looking cool. Nice even split between that light and that dark. Yeah, one little strand there that is going to haunt me. See if I can't pull all those back just a little bit. Ah, that's good enough. Yeah, good enough for you. Yeah. And since I have red thread right there. This is a little twitchy until you get some adhesive on there. And little back to front whip finish. You overlapped one one rep. I, I, I did one, which is really gonna bother me. It's probably gonna hurt the performance of this fly down the road, but yeah, yeah, definitely. We're tying for likes today, boys. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm, looks kind of like though. that. Kind of like that. That looks pretty good. Wow. wow. Mm. Nice that was right. nervy. I get to, so I get, I got to get to the point where you guys are now. And this is my white bucktail. Not from New Jersey like Tim's, but you know, what can I say? I think one of the cool things about this Thunder Creek is you could literally tie like 200 flies out of one bucktail. Yeah. Yeah. Keep them sparse. That's the. Yeah. They don't use much. No. You guys use more than I usually do. I usually make them really sparse. And I think this one's going to be pretty sparse. You, you have so much bucktail you can make a pillow out of it. What, this much? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to turn my midge jaws uh, over. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a short little pillow, but. And I like, I like my belly strip a little bit shorter than the top. So I'm going to, and I, li I like to bring it back a little bit too. Um, otherwise what happens is your fly looks like it has an underbite, you know, if the, sometimes the, the belly thing is sticking out in front of the top ones. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I come back underbite. just a little bit on that belly. I bumped my camera there. Sorry. Grabbing my scissors. Is that in focus? Yeah. And cut this off. And I'll get to the same point as you guys now. So I'll turn it back. I will. Pull these all back. And oh boy, what a mess there. 
A lot of short hairs. I'm going to have to get my cauterizing tool. I would like to see that live. Maybe yes, you should please. <laughs> go grab the straw from your sippy cup or something. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing behind my back? Uh, We're just <laughs> laughing. And that's the best way to get in your head. <laughs> oh, that's that's looking good. Yeah, it's looking sparse. L little underbite this time, but yeah, I want to underbite. All right, I'm gonna get my cauterizing tool. The hell with you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bad could happen here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll watch it. <laughs> don't just leave that last said, one. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, please don't do it, Tom. <laughs> He's got like the maniacal, demonic. <laughs> There's a lot to wrap my head around here. Uh, okay, those won't show. And then, then what? See, that's pretty sparse and short, but that's, you know, that's the way I, li I like my Thunder Creeks. And then to get that red uh, thing, I'm just going to hit this so I don't have to change threads. Just going to hit that with a marking pen, red marking pen, waterproof marker. Take a few more turns around there just to cover up the white. And then... Do it back to front with finish. <clears throat> it is short. I think the original Thunder Creeks were pretty short, weren't they? Oh, you can't see the whole thing. I'm sure they were. Well, oh. yeah. <laughs> that's short. No tail biters on that one. No, no, I don't. No, I don't need a. I don't need a trailing hook on this one. <laughs> you don't need a trailing hook on a zebra midge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's killer. You know. I'm done. I'm done. Don't they look for the injured minnows anyway? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right now all right flagler this is the time where you have to leave the room because yep we're gonna do eyes and resin and uh let's see what we're gonna do here is i have these little tiny stick on eyes that are foil they're not 3d eyes um i think the original had them painted on right so yeah, i'm just going to take a little painted on. tiny glob of super ooh, that one was dripping down i almost screwed my whole fly up i'm going to put just a little glob of glue right in the middle of that eye and fine tip tweezers this is like a, uh, it's the smallest eye that we had in the shop. So I'm just going to grab that like this and apply it just like that. So I'll do that on the other side now. I kind of want to go buy the game Operation again because I think I'd be way better at it now than when I was a kid. These those, those, those are wicked small eyes, right, Cheech? Like, yeah, they're way small. Like, yeah, I, like I had two mil, two millimeter. Yeah, I had nothing that was small enough. Yeah, so let me see what I can show you in 
There's there's one uh, 3D eye that you can get in two millimeter. I it's hairline has. Wow, it. that is um, teeny. That's a lot. Yeah, it's. I can tell you what it's called. This one's a Wopsy one that doesn't have the 3D bulb. It's just a paint. It's just a sticker. All right. So I've got both the eyes on, and now I'm going to put some resin. I'm going to start with the Solares Medium, and I'm just going to, well, let me make sure I got my bodkin ready, and I'm just going to give it a nice coat. <laughs> my tip is clogged on the resin. Who did this to me, Brigham? Technical <laughs> difficulties. I'll Cheech, be right back. Cheech thinks it's a good idea to put his resins right on his desk by an open window. Ah. So the sun <laughs> hits the tips of his resin and hardens it. <laughs> And he, he doesn't change it, so. <laughs> he, just, he has these little plastic containers, like, that you put beads in. Uh, but he has them full of UV resin tips. Yeah, like that, right there. On his desk. <laughs> so he can just replace yeah. them. Here's them. This is the best way to unclog one of these. You take it and you throw it over your shoulder and you put another one on. They're a dollar each. And they're the loon tips. Anyway. <sighs> what did you say about me while I was gone, Brig? Truth. Okay. Spoke truth. All right. So we're just going to start with like a healthy coat. This is the medium viscosity. And we'll just start building that up. Your eyes are getting very watery. I know the wind's from the west today, too. So, <laughs> so I'm going to take a vodka now, and I'm just going to smooth this all out. You'll want a little bit of it to seep in. It's fine if it does. Um, it actually makes the head more durable. And I'll take that resin all the way back past the tie-in. And this does take a second for me to get it all to congregate in the proper place. All right, so once I have kind of a decent coating of this. It's not going to be the final coat, but I'm just going to take my, if I can get this, there we go. I'm going to let this just rotate for a little bit and then I'm going to cure it and I'll just put one more layer on. What, what that does is this base layer is always going to want to be seeping into the deer hair. So if you don't create a base layer and just let it seep in, and I'm just hitting it with the light as I rotate it. But if you don't do this with the base layer, the next layer won't kind of create that really nice, smooth coat that you're looking for. All right, so let's see if we can get that to work. We're going to throw another coat on, not of the thick, of the medium. All right, so... How are your eyes, Tim? You good? Good so far. Maybe a half hour that'll get here. <laughs> All right. Okay, now you can you can control the shape of this head now to make it as bulbous or as slim as you want. But but you can see with this next coat, I don't even have to go in there with the bodkin because it just wants to spread out and evenly coat because it's got a a cured layer underneath it. Oh no, look at that little glob on the bottom. It's almost like I did that on purpose. <laughs> look at that. Oh, you probably did. That's the biggest UV light I've ever seen. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Listen. It's a cheech size UV what, light. What is this? The, wow. the plasma, you know. Someone asked me if it was hard to tie flies with big hands one time. I've told this story about a billion times. And, my answer is, I don't know, because I've never been able to tie flies with small hands. <laughs> anyway, check that out. I have I don't know where this little uh, bulb on the bottom came from, but it's going to stay there. That looks kind of cool. Cauterizing tool will fix that. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think I'll, I'll get a razor blade and cut it off, but I won't do it unless I'm on camera because I got yelled at last time. Anyway, that is my completed... Thunder Creek fly. You see that? Let's see if I can. That is cool looks looking, Cheech. Yeah. yeah. It looks nice. I Look. like it. Briggs messing with the camera to see uh, 
Um, Did I bring it close? Let's see. To see if we can get it to focus. Is it working, Bree? Maybe. Let's see. Bring it right. Yeah, there you go. All right. Good. There you have it. The Thunder Creek fly, in my interpretation. Oh, before we go, though, I wanted to show you the other color combo. So I did oh. a purple and chartreuse with white and a yellow eye. And then I did a baby bass flavor where I actually took paint park paint marker and made some like gill plates and orange or uh, wow. orange gill, but it's got black stripes, olive and white. Anyway, this has been a super cool pattern to play with. Cool. That's it for me, boys. All right. I guess I'm up. Um, <laughs> As many of you know, I cannot use UV cure resin. I'm highly sensitized to it. My eyes swell up. I can't see. So Sally Hansen. And a um, couple different kinds of Sally Hansen. What I'm going to use here just to, so I'm not wasting a whole ton of time is some Insta Dry. And I always do it over a, uh, a little foam thing just so I don't mess up my tying bench. And just a little bit. And I'm going to go, here, let me zoom out. So, and kind of just like Cheech was saying with the UV, I, I want to get this so there's, it soaks in a little bit into the thread wraps as well as into that bucktail. And it kind of makes for a little base layer, if you will. And so I do need, and I'll let Mr. Rosenbauer go. I do need to let this dry, even though it is insta insta dry. Um, I can't do stick on eyes. And so we got to let this dry just a little bit. I do have something pretty cool from... I don't even know where I got it from to help it dry. Yes, show us your tool. Show us your new tool. Yeah, this thing's cool. And I, I, I used it too when I was when I was able to actually use UV Cure resin uh, to blow the fumes away. But it's just like one of these little fans that's got a sprayer in it, and but for for drying. Oops. You don't no, use the sprayer, do you? No, I, I almost <laughs> did. I just pulled the trigger. <laughs> you know, wet the whole thing down. Um, now, we were getting criticized about tools, and now we've got a freaking lagoon the Disneyland yeah. mister. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave that run, and it's going to help that, that uh, <clears throat> actually move it back a little bit, help that sucker to dry out. Kind of fun to play with the thing. All right, I'll finish mine while while that's drying. How's that? So we don't Sounds keep good. people here forever. Forever. Okay, so um, I have these, and I found out what eyes these are. Orvis used to sell them, but they're little tiny. Oops, wrong camera. They're little. They're little tiny three D eyes, and they're called. Um, Mirage Dome 332nd Eyes. Hairline still sells them. And they're the small, as, the, as far as I can tell, they're the smallest 3D eye you can find. So they're, and I, I do like a small eye on this fly. So I am going to, um, I put a little drop of super glue on a post it and I'm just going to put a little super glue here. I need a little more. Because when you if you try to do the um if you try to do the the eye if you just stick the eyes on these flies and then try to UV them um the eyes slip as 
I'm sure Cheech has found out that's why he did the same thing. <laughs> that's exactly right. You have an awesome <clears throat> plot where you're smearing resin all around and the eye decides to come with it. Yeah. And then I'm going to grab these little one of these little tiny eyes and stick one on there. And stick another one on there. Make sure they're lined up. Yeah, okay. And then um, just press these in to make sure they're in Those there. are way smaller than I thought they were, Tom. That's a really... Yeah, they're teeny, yeah. And then, uh, oops. What are you laughing at, Flagler? I I only put this is kind of a big head. I'm only going to put one coat on here, and I think it'll it should be plenty. I'm going to be way behind here, guys. I got a pain on my eyes, so you're going to have to talk amongst yourselves. Will I, or should I paint them on now, or wait? I'm paint them on now. All right. Why not paint them on yeah. now? Because they they take some time to dry. People can, I'll switch cameras so they can kind of see it. Is that one of those Harbor Freight UV lights or is it just a little one? It's a loon one. <laughs> it's that little guy, right? Yeah. The Nano. Oh, yeah. Nice. Tim, what's the round thing that you're using to paint? Is that just like a dowel or a... Um, it's, it's actually a toothpick, and I have the small end kind of sanded off for the pupil and then the large end for the iris or whatever it is. Look at that. Oh, you're, ac oh, you're actually oh. doing the old-fashioned paint, painted eyes. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and I just, you know, put it out here and... I want a little more yellow, I think, on that side. Just a, just a tad bigger. There we go. That's better. Very traditional. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I kind of like the, the look of the traditionalized myself. Uh -huh. but, yeah. well, I don't um, think you can fish in Jersey without painted on ice. That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so I'm just going to let that dry. This is the Insta Insta dry stuff from Sally Hansen that's really dries pretty quick. But you don't want to rush it with the black pupil. So you guys are all done. I am yeah. done, Tim. Just oh, waiting for you. I know and I still waiting have waiting for I you, have, Tim. I have to put a top coat on. Ugh. It just looks oh, so man. much better with the, so much better with the top coat. Let me see if I can right. get my black black on real quick. Maybe Uncle Cheech can tell us a story while we're waiting. Or if somebody has questions. Ooh, yeah. Did anybody, did anybody yeah, have questions, questions along the way? Uh, Roger wants to know if that's a Renzetti toothpick. <laughs> It's a little cheaper than the Renzetti model. Um, it's not a Renzetti. It won't work. We've actually been starting to get into paint pen markers for like Paragon oh, wing cases. There we go. Oh, yeah, nice. Good. good job. That one, yeah. Leave that. Yeah, that one's set. Nice, nice amount of bulb to the, the pupil, yeah. if you will. There we go. Now, the the, the thing is, I, I got to let this dry. Um, that's why I want you to talk among yourselves, because 
the um, mm -hmm. the next coat isn't Insta Dry. It's the the Extreme Wear from Sally Hansen, um, their fly tying division. What? Me oh, here's a good question. What method would would you use to fish this fly? Full sink line. Uh, for me, it's like a poly leader or versa leader. And just because I I. I, I really like neutrally buoyant streamers because they look, you know, the bait fish they're imitating anyway are neutrally buoyant. And so, but if you have to get them down to depth, which most of the time you do, um, something like a, a poly leader or versa leader, you know, three inch per second or five inch per second. And that, that lets them kind of move naturally under underwater for me anyway. See, I'm, I'm thinking like this is a great fly. I'm going to throw it on some of my still water rigs. You know, we have a lot of lakes here that have fish that are very piscivorous, meaning they eat other fish. Did I say that right? I think so. But anyway. Piscivorous. They get yeah, pissed at other fish. They get pissed at other fish and they sivor them. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> oh. And Joni looked that one up. Sivir them. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Copper Joan, you're on my team. Here. It's a word. Anyway, no, but I'll probably use it on anything from a floating line just under the surface all the way down to some aggressive uh, deep sink lines. I mean, um, on a river, probably a, a sink tip like, like Tim was saying. Uh, the cool thing about fishing a sink tip in a river as opposed to a full sink is you have floating line to mend. It gives you a lot more control. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I, I, my... I fish this. I no, I fish this differently. I I use this as a, a really a low water brighter day streamer. Um, huh. you know, when fish are real spooky because it lands so light, there's no weight oh. to it, and it's pretty sparse and subtle. And so um, I, I typically fish this with a floating line and a long leader. And you could I'm actually talking, guys. the body too. Oh, and somebody somebody asked about weighting the body. Yeah, <laughs> I've I, never weight. I've never weighted these. Have you guys? No, and I'll, I'll come back to. I I like the way. I'm just going to keep on doing this while we're chatting. Um, I really like the way. Um, a neutrally buoyant one, and th this one actually floats a little bit. Um, I like I like the way they behave underwater. Um, a little better than weighted streamers. Yeah, that's only, I mean, only, it... only recently, though, guys, to be honest with you. I mean, I was a lot of beadhead streamers for many years and cone heads, things like that. And, um, but I, I've kind of, kind of because of the trout space stuff and mm -hmm. um, come around to more because it's so easy to change out tips and do things like that. That, oh, don't do that. Don't melt. I rushed it. Oh. oh, it's just, a, it's like a little eyebrow. It's like a, yeah. it's like a, it's like a Brezhnev eye. Yeah. Let's look at this side. Yeah. Look on oh, that. It was not, <laughs> it was not quite cured. Now think about how you saved that fly, Tim. You know, it, uh, it, it was going to go to the junk pile because you tied it on wrong and you freaking salvaged it. And now look I at salvaged it. it. Now I screwed it up. No, you can put a little more yellow on there and a little more black and. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that. This, this stuff, the extreme wear, takes a little longer to dry than the uh, than the uh, insta dry. But Somebody just... asked if 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 you if we fish this with a loop knot. I do, but I I'm not convinced that it's absolutely essential. But it just the loop knot on that ring eye just looks too tasty to not. Uh -huh. You know what I mean. I'll use a loop knot if I'm using heavier tippet, like a 2X, but if I'm going to use 3 or 4X, it doesn't matter quite as much. But, yeah, the loop knot looks awesome when it's tied on a on a ring knife fly. Look at that eye came right back around. <laughs> Ooh, that one's not so good. <laughs> no, it looks fine. It looks fine. Uh, Joe G says, try to do two different straight pins with different size heads. Yeah, that's why I used to paint mine, is I'd get two pins, one with a larger head, one yeah. with a smaller head. Did they have yeah, electricity of, back then? Of, hmm? Did they have electricity <laughs> back then and everything? 
No, no. It, you had the, you know, it, you had a pedal sewing machine one, you know. Ooh, nice. You could probably rig up a cool rotary vice out of one of those. Yeah, you probably could. All right, I think we're ready. I think we're ready to do the the voting reveal. Wait, there's a vote. The, yeah, so there you is. need to you need to get Brig to uh, do a close up on your fly, Cheech. Brig. And then we uh, we rotate. God, I know who's not going to win. Me. <laughs> no, look at that. I actually want to bring mine up a little bit, if that's okay with you guys, just so we can, and hopefully I won't drop it. Somebody asked if the if the red is supposed to imitate the gills, the red line, and I said, and I will answer yes, it's supposed to imitate the gills. I, I'm coming, Joan. My executive producer has given me grief here. Oh, Copper Joan. You Copper don't Joan. be talking about Copper Joan like that. Yeah. <sighs> we can just rotate it back and forth too. Does that work? Is Tanner is the uh, is the voting thing live? I am putting the voting link in the comment section now. It should work everywhere except Instagram, I believe. Okay. Use click on a link and go vote. There we go. She's <gasps> Come there. On. That's rotated enough. There we go. Got one here that's stuck in there. <clears throat> this is like in like a bodybuilding contest where all the bodybuilders are like stepping in front of each other and like flexing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is so crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, Tim, who's done it before? Like, goodness gracious, that sounded legit. <laughs> if, if For the people that are, are voting in the comments, those don't count. So you need to go to the link. Hurry and go to the link, Brig, and tell everyone shopping downstairs they have to vote for me and we'll give them 5% off. All two people. Wow. <laughs> See, and I'm going to add a little air, give it the Fabio. Oh, that's cheating. A little water flowing by. Watch this. Watch. It is amazing how differently all three of us tied this, though, isn't it? It really is. So who did it, it the correct way? Or is there no well, way, just like anything else? I think the correct way would be the way Keith Fulcher tied it. And, um, Is that who was the originator? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, thank you, Keith. Very nice pattern. I would add it, for me anyway, I'd add another coat of clear just to fill in all those little whoop de doos between yeah between. i mean if you got like some 30 minute epoxy and like a, a roller you'd be able to have a really awesome head you could do yeah. like five or six at a time you know does two tim does two-part epoxy bother you the regular old-fashioned epoxy uh, I, it's really funny the five minute does the two ton does not the more mm -hmm. like the 10 minute stuff interesting and yeah it's something with what's coming off of it when it's drying um, and and um, super glue you know cyanoacrylate does not bother me and obviously Sally Hansen does not either Norman wants to know how to get the link Tanner do you want to explain that again It's in the Facebook comments, I think. It's in the comments. It's in the comments. We'll keep voting open for another 15 seconds. Uh, it is very close between the top two. That's all I'll say. Very close. Brigham, go and vote. Turn this off. I know it's on Joan, your phone. Get after it. Are you, did you vote?
I would tell people to vote in my shop, but they would not vote for me 100%. <laughs> they would vote for anyone but me. I badly want to said my there. eyes are crooked. I don't think my eyes are crooked. Maybe they're not talking about the fly. Oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that could be. You know what? That stuff's dry enough. I All right. Know. The voting is closed. <laughs> voting right. is closed. Since there's since there's three of you, do you want me to announce third place first and then first place? Well, we know who's third place. <laughs> me. No. Uh, so third place is Tom with 30 votes. I think we set a record for the number of votes this week, Tom. Dude, we need to do this more. That's what that means. First place with 68 votes, Tim Flagler. Him. He nice always work, wins. Tim. Tim wins. Cheech, you had 60 votes. That's close. That Second was place was very close. Copper Joan vote for <laughs> I need a recount. <laughs> this, is, this is not fair. <laughs> no, this was awesome. Super yes, that was fun, guys. It was fun. It was fun. And um, I, I see a lot of requests to uh, do it again. So we should uh, we should see if we can um, do it again. Yeah, that, absolutely. That would, that would be, be super, super awesome. And then uh, maybe you could choose the fly, Tom. That would be a good yeah. one. Yeah. All right. Um, choose when I could maybe have a chance of not coming in third place on it. He's going to choose a Tups indispensable just so he can oh. harvest the uh, urine stained hairs off of a vixen goat. No, it's not. It's a ram. It's, it's off of a ram. It's a male, and it's not a vixen. It's a male ram. You don't know the tub's indispensable? I'm just throwing words out there, Rosenbaum. <laughs> I'm not you. I'm cheap. I, I say stupid stuff all the time. If you say your <laughs> I just tie stupid flies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, thank you, everyone, for sticking with us. This was a, a, lo a long one, but it takes longer for three people to three tie. Three people, so, yeah. Um, we will, if we'll, someone doesn't use resin. Yeah, we will. We yeah, will that was try, my bad. <laughs> we will try to do this again. And um, thank you all for watching and for your support and for your great comments. And um, I don't know when the next tie off is because, or I don't know when the next tie off is. I don't know when the next fly tying is because I do this typically once a week, but I'm having my um, room here redone remodeled and with some bookshelves and painted so i may be i may be off for a few weeks until that gets done and then we'll have a tie off uh and maybe in a month or so if you're up for it cheech i'm in okay i'm in we'll, now, we'll now do it I, i've got to revenge i've got to avenge my loss all right yeah me too yeah. Hey, hey tom are we are we yeah. gonna are we gonna show cheech how to do the fade to black <laughs> no well, thank you, everyone, and, um, no. and we, we, appreciate, yeah, we, are. we appreciate you all coming. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>